to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Tuesday, April 6th. Still well within the April Fool's window. Well within. So who knows what can transpire on today's show. Congratulations to uh, uh, Volkswagen and uh, Michael Strahan Strahan for breaking (laughs) April Fool's even more that it was already broken. They're breaking down the barriers, Mike, to, to allow... Uh, any time to be a great time to fool someone with a funny gag. <laughs> you, you sold that so well. Thank you. Uh, from what I understand, Mike, both of those jokes were actually from the 2020 April Fools. Oh, that's so, so long it's still ago? within that window. Hey, there's lying season. <laughs> <laughs> lying season. It's upon us. April lying day. Yeah, okay. I I face no consequences for any lies I tell because they're just. Goofs. This really is lying season, though. We're yeah, entering the NFL are. draft season where smoke screens and here's what I'm doing and <laughs> yeah, rights uh, galore. So, But we do have more information. Yeah, rights galore. Yeah, rights galore. <laughs> I, I loved my eloquence there. I feel like you began a sentence with galore, which is the first time that's ever happened. <laughs> Like it, it begun a new. You began a new. St- no, no, no. That was yeah, rights galore. Like that was the finish. That was the exclamation point. Uh, well, I'm in a good mood, not just because we have uh, a rookie preview show today and Thursday. Today is quarterbacks and running backs. Thursday we'll do wide receivers, tight ends. But I'm really excited because I'm getting space internet. Oh yes. man! I just found out that I'm getting space internet for our our family cabin up north and space internet is super important what a time to be alive because we did when we grew up we didn't know we could get space internet no we couldn't get internet yeah <laughs> like that was a dumb word we began with dial up that is correct and then i began by choosing a long distance ad- uh, phone number on my aol on accident <laughs> i chose alabama instead of arizona oh. and then the internet cost my family a lot of money that month uh, why is the phone bill two thousand dollars? And now it's coming from space with with SpaceX. Space crazy. and crazy. All right, we have some breaking news we want to talk about right at the top. Before we get into the rookie breakdowns, and uh, thank you so much for joining us at the FF Ballers on Twitter. By the way, Instagram.com slash Fantasy Footballers. Breaking news right before sh- the show recording today. Oh, so polite. Yeah, oh. we we put out a press release to most of the teams, and we said, look. Here's when we record. It's we give them one of those window like a like a serviceman window where like yes. we record between one and four on an average day. Yeah. Make all your news somewhere before we record. It's been very rude, a lot for these teams to drop news after we have recorded. Yeah, but you know, the Jets, Carolina, very considerate. Sam Darnold being traded by the New York Jets to the Carolina Panthers for a 2021 six round pick. And second and fourth round picks in 2022. Now, okay. when this news came out, both of you two gentlemen um, were surprised at the haul. You thought that this was a really good deal for the Jets. The, you were surprised they got this much. It's basically a a two four six deal, and they got a second, a fourth, and a and a, and a sixth. I think this is not over uh, compensating. Like I I don't I don't think this is uh, too much capital to give up to try to get. Um, your quarterback, if you believe that that Sam Darnold's your guy, which obviously Carolina, I don't, I don't believe that they're doing this because they have, uh, you know, odds of like, yeah, I think there's a chance. M- my belief is that the Carolina Panthers believe in Sam Darnold and they targeted him. Well, I, I think it is good for both sides. Let's put it that way. You know, Carolina, if they didn't believe that they were going to get a quarterback they liked at eight, and they need to move forward without Teddy Bridgewater to make the next step. They're, they're simply saying Sam Darnold today is better than Mac Jones or Trey Lance or Justin Fields. Or Teddy Bridgewater. Or Teddy Bridgewater. Or, yeah. But, it, you know, when I say that they got a nice haul, I mean, Arizona didn't get a 2-4-6 for Josh Rosen after the, uh, the one-year wonder. So believing in Sam Darnold enough to pay this much, it, was an ex- it makes him the starter. It was an expiring asset. Like it wasn't a secret that the Jets were going to take a quarterback. That's a good point. Maybe it, maybe it's a smokescreen that it's Zach Wilson, 
But that doesn't matter because they're taking a quarterback at two, and every team already knows that. So they know that Sam Darnold is now the backup, and he's available. So I mean, that's good work by the Jets to get uh, get the two, four, six, eight. Who do we appreciate? Yeah, well, they didn't get the eight. It's not an appreciation deal, Mike. I'm sorry. Mm. Uh, Sam Darnold's fifth year option was exercised. Sam by Darnold the Panthers. appreciates it. Well, Sam Darnold managers appreciate it because yeah. he was just brought to life again in dynasty leagues. Uh, whether he's relevant for fantasy this year, it, look, higher odds if a team goes out, pursues you, you don't have Adam Gase, you do have DJ Moore and Robbie Anderson and, and Christian, Christian McCaffrey. McCaffrey. So um, we will be back in the same boat again with Carolina of a variable in place like we were last year where, okay, new quarterback. And I don't know, I'm kind of intrigued. I'm excited. There's more unknown upside to Sam Darnold and maybe downside, uh, than there was to Teddy Bridgewater, which means higher ceiling potential for some of these players that sure. you kind of knew what Teddy Bridgewater was going to bring to the table, right? Yeah, yeah, you did, and it wasn't enough. Uh, Sam Darnold still has the potential. He's He came into the league super young. He's 23 years old, um, and he is now coming along a, a long list of players who have had incredible success after Gase has been removed from their life. And so getting free of Adam Gase, uh, getting these weapons, uh, getting you know a team that is now committing to you with resources, boosting your confidence, it might get rid of a few ghosts out there. I, I think that uh, this is a good situation for Sam Darnold. I'm surprised the Jets didn't want Teddy Bridgewater back in the deal just to be a support for whatever rookie quarter. You know, if it's uh, Zach Wilson coming in, but we have another you know another quarterback trade this offseason that makes things pretty interesting and it and it locks the jets into a rookie quarterback as we know and we all expect that to be Zach Wilson at number 2 and obviously takes the pants panthers out of that market in takes the uh, pants takes the pants right out of the market <laughs> takes the pants right off the market um which hot. which this last weekend in Arizona yeah. did that they were right out we had to dress up yes. for easter and it was like can I strip on the way to the car going back from church? Yeah, how quick when I get home can these uh, – why did I not wear my rip-off jeans? That was <laughs> the only question I had is why don't these jeans Velcro on the side? So pants-free zone, you were saying. Um, but this, you know, it's uh, – <laughs> It's bad news for your Trey Lances or the – you know, this takes another team out of the market. But if you are a fan of, you know, the, the Patriots, you know, someone drafting in the middle – um, where There's you still plenty? Well, the Falcons, right? Falcons could grab a quarterback. Certainly, but they they already could because they're at four. Um, you know, so but like one of those Denver, teams, Denver yes, can move exactly. up now. I'd be super excited if I was a, a a Broncos fan. Yeah, and that would potentially transform a lot of fantasy value. And that's why I I realized something. Um, I was really stupid. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that one you time. Got there. That one yep. time. <laughs> yeah. No, but on the last show, we were talking about um, overreactions, right? And so if you haven't heard the overreaction episode, I encourage you to go back and listen. We each brought up two kinds of overreactions that could happen. But, I, but the more I thought about it, I was like, I don't know. There's a lot that can happen in this draft. And if a couple of big weapons go to Philadelphia, I'm not going to feel the same way I did about Jalen Hurts being outside that top eight. The and way I feel right now in the quote-unquote – Greg Ward zone. Sure. Mm -hmm. And they're in they're sitting very pretty for they have what, a wide receiver. They've got if they want. Great picks. Yeah, I think they're at the six. No, they traded. Oh, they, they traded have the 12, twelve, but they have what? Uh, do they have three picks in the first two rounds? I can't recall that. Take a look at their um draft order for me. All anyway, right. I think that, you know, there's a decent chance a good player gets there and maybe maybe that changes the outlook. I don't know. All right, uh, any other big-time news, Brooks, that just broke from any inconsiderate teams? Nah, nothing right now. Okay. Good job, NFL. A reminder, check out the Ultimate Draft Kit at ultimatedraftkit.com. We have a, a lot going up on the, the Dynasty Pass. Yeah. So if you've got the UDK Plus, a uh, brand-new mock draft that we just completed is going up. We took a look and redid the rookie rankings. Um, so it, the, the whole Dynasty pan, uh, Pass has been – uh, updated. Was that, was that a, a pants? A pants again? <laughs> Got pants on the mind, apparently. Old dynasty pants. Put them on. Old, yeah, Put can't them. stop you, thinking about pants. <laughs> <laughs> if you get the ultimate draft kit plus, you get the dynasty pants, and those are the best pants you'll ever put on. <laughs> oh, my gosh. We're putting the dynasty pants on today. I know that. Mm-hmm. Sometimes 
I just never know what's going to happen. This oh, is a, my goodness. This is what we call a post-launch <laughs> show. <laughs> what did you have today? I wasn't uh, with might you. might have been Chipotle. Okay. <laughs> Gosh. Are your pants causing you an issue right my now? My pants are a little tight at the moment. <laughs> All right. It's rookie time. Hey, rookie. Welcome to the NFL. Oh, we're not letting the dynasty pants die. These things, <laughs> one, a few times a week we put on the dynasty pants. and <laughs> Here we are. Here we are. All right. Quarterbacks, running backs, this is our rookie overview show. Now, we're doing this a little earlier than we have done in years past. The anticipation, just too strong. Mm-hmm. Got to put on the dynasty pants and start at the quarterback position. Starting with Trevor Lawrence. Uh, it would be... I hear he's good. Yeah, I would say it would be a shock heard around the world if Trevor Lawrence somehow didn't go number one. So we know where he's going. This is an advantage, right, in breaking down a player's future or potential. Um, Everybody knows who Trevor Lawrence is. Uh, Number one recruit coming out of high school and delivered on all the promise, right, coming into the league. And this was tanking for Trevor uh, two years ago for Miami. Um this is a player that is built like an NFL quarterback, uh, above six, average. 6'6", six, 220. Six, yeah. Oof. Uh, great athleticism, great arm strength. Yes. Can make all the throws. Uh, a mature quarterback, like of all the quarterbacks coming out, he's one that I think uh, has displayed the most pro traits most the most consistently. And he's got above average, you know, escapability. I think one thing that was really interesting uh, when looking at Trevor Lawrence, and I'll get your reaction to it, is that he had the highest percentage of attempts in the run, like the run pass options, and in screen passes, mm-hmm. which is one of those things that you know you can't blame a quarterback for what offense they're in in, well, in in college. They have to just execute that offense. They had lost a few weapons. I mean, you, you had lost T. Higgins the year before, and then they had some. It, this their offense this year was more of a uh, this is what we have to do, and Trevor Lawrence th- still succeeded right. in that offense. So I'm I don't look at that as a uh, point uh, against like him. That, Trevor Lawrence's entire profile when you watch his games, it's not Dwayne Haskins. Like he he had to modify this year, but he still can he still goes down the field. Yeah, one of, one of the things that puts Trevor Lawrence at everybody's number one spot is longevity. It, you don't have the single season. Like if I take Joe Burrow's final season and I put that against Trevor Lawrence's final season, Joe Burrow was better to me. I, I liked, I liked sure. the, the tape. I don't think Trevor Lawrence is a perfect prospect. Um, you know, it, but nobody is, is a hundred percent perfect. What you like about Trevor Lawrence is that as Andy alluded to, he came in as the number one recruit from high school and then he, he improved every year. So you have so much tape where, as we're going to talk through these other quarterbacks, not everybody has this long track record of success where he's dealt with the, being the guy he's dealt with the hype. He's dealt with the media. He's, he's overcome everything. He's done everything you wanted to see, uh, in college. So he's pretty much everyone's number one pick and and specifically on this show we're, we're talking about for fantasy um and and while he isn't going to be the most prolific rusher he is mobile he will add yards on the ground um I see him as a comp to a Justin Herbert or an Aaron Rodgers that's kind of where I've got him um and I, I think he'll be great for fantasy because when you have that capital and that hype you guarantee he's got like if he sucks if he comes in and flames out you still have four years of being an NFL starter and, and producing something for fantasy, and he's not going to suck. So in, in rookie drafts, because we're going through these guys uh, based off of our, our fantasy uh, rookie rankings currently before we know landing places, are you right now very confident that, Jason, he, he would be the first quarterback you, you would take yeah. in a rookie pick, even, even though like guys like Justin Fields and, and Trey Lance – who have, they have massive rushing upside, especially Trey Lance. You would still feel more comfortable going with I what would, feels like the safer pick. Yes, because of the because of the safety. Because I do think Trevor Lawrence is probably a ten year starter and is just a uh, you know a, he really is. We we've heard it over and over and over. The best prospect since Andrew Luck, but right. he he is. He's one of those rare guys that was touted super young and has come through every stage along the way. 
Yeah, and in his size, physicality, the ability to run the football and give you a baseline every game. Like Andrew Luck is a good comp for him too. And I guess the question then for for fantasy players, because I think we're entering a new era, right, where you can be a rookie quarterback and make a fantasy impact. Justin Herbert did it last year. Joe Burrow did it at times last year. Um, we we saw Baker Mayfield do it at times in Kyler his rookie did. season. Kyler did it. Uh, this is no longer – you're not hamstrung because a lot of the offenses in the NFL now are innovating. And the, he goes to Jacksonville, but you don't go to the same Doug Marone offense, right? You have right. A, you have a renovated scheme. You have some weapons that I think we all like there. Yeah. Um, LaVisca Chenault, DJ Chark, uh, James Robinson. And Marvin. Uh, and Marvin Jones now. So how long before Lawrence threatens as a fantasy um, contributor? Is it is it a year one expectation for you because he comes out with the capital or is this something that you are um, you're looking two or three down, years down the line? I think he's a year one streamer. That's that's how I view him. I don't think he's going to be a locked and loaded uh, Justin Herbert. You got to start him every week once he catches fire in the rookie year. But I think he's going to have a ton of it, it, pretty much more what you saw from Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow had some big games and he had some bad games. Burrow's an interesting uh, player to look at in that situation because of how bad Cincinnati was. So, you know, tough division for him to go into. Tough team to turn around. Could be playing from behind a lot. That could translate from, you know, you could have a mediocre NFL season and a very good fantasy season if he has enough opportunities. Mike, how do you see it? Uh, I see – I'm with Jason that he – I mean, these are our, our, our dynasty rankings, and it's – I think he's the, the, the first dynasty quarterback I would take in a, in a rookie pick or in a rookie draft. But in a redraft, I would be taking Fields or I would be taking Trey Lance, assuming that Trey Lance ends up as a, a, a top 10 pick because I think that they can – Only with an assured starting opportunity. Yeah, yeah, of course. But I'm, And I, I'm projecting like Justin Fields, I'm projecting still at number three to San Francisco. Uh, so these guys, and uh, knowing that they're the starters, the people, the, the quarterbacks that run more in redraft, I'm more interested in them because I think they make a bigger impact right away. Uh, yeah, I, I side with the Lawrence side. And, like, you know, Fields, we'll talk about him now. But if he goes to number three, you may not see the field this year. I think if he goes number three, Jimmy Garoppolo will not be on the team. That, that I know they're saying that they got permission from the ownership to – draft the quarterback at number three and retain Jimmy Garoppolo, play Jimmy Garoppolo this year. Um, other reports are coming out saying that they, they're already shopping him, but their price is a first round pick. I don't think they're going to get a first it round is pick right for Garoppolo, um, which is more than they paid to get Garoppolo. That would be quite the flu. <laughs> well, I guess you'd hope that if they made that kind of a move, they would believe that they could start that player that they drafted three. Exactly. But if they drafted a, you know, Rumors abound, right? But if they drafted a Trey Lance, that player might not be ready year one. So you you have uh, yeah, to yeah agreed with that could be in a a different situation. All right, we're going to talk about Justin Fields next, so we'll get to expand on our thoughts uh, there. But I want to thank today's sponsor. We're talking about Hello Fresh. Hello Fresh. Uh, fresh pre measured ingredients, mouth watering seasonal recipes delivered right to your door. Mike, I insist, skip the trips to the grocery store. Don't even bother getting into the car. Don't got to tell me twice. Uh, make home cooking easy, fun, affordable. That is what HelloFresh does. That's what they've been doing. It's why they're number one, which also Justin Fields number one, by the way. Uh, not on my list, but like his physical jersey he is number, oh, he is his number, number one. one. Oh, you so is uh, Jalen Hurts. Yeah, I heard he's going to do that. <laughs> uh, HelloFresh cuts out stressful meal planning, cuts out those grocery store trips, 10 to 20 minute meals. Uh, maybe you don't have uh, a, a ton of time to cook it up. Well, they've got the, you figured out. And uh, over four out of five HelloFresh customers say it helps them lead a healthier lifestyle with delicious, low calorie, carb smart, and vegetarian options each week. Uh, easiest thing to do when you want to eat healthy is have it there for you and somebody else makes it and you didn't have to go when you're hungry and put ingredients together because that doesn't ever work. Go to HelloFresh.com slash footballers12. And use the code FOOTBALLERS12 for 12 free meals, including free shipping. Once again, that is HelloFresh.com slash FOOTBALLERS12 and use the code FOOTBALLERS12 for 12 free meals, including free shipping. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. And Foot Clan, if you're already eating at home, which I am, you got to you gotta get in on First Leaf. Are you a wine lover? Put uh, on your wine pants. Put on, <laughs> put on your wine pants and get First Leaf because uh, this is 
high quality, really nice wine that is being curated by people way smarter than you or me and delivered right to your door. Uh, whatever you like. And, and uh, the, the best part that I've found from First Leaf is I'm learning even more what I like. Like, I always thought I was a Pinot Noir guy. Like, that was my, that was my oh, jam. Oh, but you're not? No, I love Pinot Noir, but Zinfandel, regular Zinfandel. Oh. I have learned that. Thank you uh, to First Leaf because you, you open the app, you rate the wines you get, and they have a smart algorithm. There's no guesswork. They know you better no than you know yourself. recommendations. They genuinely do. Um, you know, they have a one-of-a-kind algorithm. It, it takes feedback, sends curated future wine recommendations, and they work directly with the world's best winemakers. You will not be disappointed with first leaf you could save time money and stress with first leaf the wine club designed with you in mind join today and you'll get six bottles of wine for 29.95 and free shipping just go to tryfirstleaf.com slash footballers that's six bottles of wine for 29.95 and free shipping at tryfirstleaf.com slash footballers all right justin fields Right now, our consensus number two ranked uh, rookie quarterback. But, but Andy. Yes. Why isn't he ever being drafted number two in mock drafts by the NFL? Yeah, that's a great question. Voice of public opinion, and because um, they like Zach Wilson, they like a lot. Zach Wilson because of one throw he made in his pro day. <laughs> no, I mean, there's a lot to like about both these players. I'll be honest with you, I really like Justin Fields. I like Justin Fields I feel a like, lot. It's unanimous. Yeah, and I feel like we've gone through, like what you're saying, with the consensus out there in the mock drafts, we've gone through this period of like self-doubt where like, you know, look, it's our job to go watch the film, analyze the destination, put it together for fantasy, even more than NFL, right? But, but I feel like we've done that for a while and you get a read on a certain player. And I think Justin, Field, Justin Fields has the second highest floor, okay? The second highest floor of all the quarterbacks. I agree with that. That's not to say I don't believe that Zach Wilson's ceiling is actually higher than Justin Fields. Right now, I believe that to be the case. I think Zach Wilson has a higher high. He has the Mahomes, Rodgers, um, find the right uh, situation and and go to MVP type levels. That's what I believe about him. But we'll talk about him later. Justin Fields though is extremely uh, and talented and reliable, and everything I saw in film told me that this was somebody that is going to make an impact at the next level. Uh, I told you, to me, he reminds me a lot of Cam Newton, just in his his stance, his pocket presence, um, the way he throws the football. Look, he's he's not as big as Cam Newton, and he doesn't run like Cam Newton. But, he's but he a, throws better than Cam Newton. Yeah, and he, he's a dual-threat quarterback. He's, he's still big, He's extremely accurate. He's not, he's not small. He's 6'3", 228. And so I, I didn't, you know, some of these players we've talked about a lot together in the office, some we've we've kind of mentioned in our own scouting, but you guys are both with me or I'm with you on Justin Fields. Yeah, I I love him. I his rushing ability, he is he is he is very fast and and not small. I mean the 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 comparisons to Vic, it makes sense, but he because they both have huge arms and and can run, but I I think Fields is going to be outstanding. And I think he's going to be outstanding for fantasy football. Uh immediately i i do think he'll be number three he'll be the number three pick go to san francisco and we'll start and he'll be able to make an impact in that i don't want to keep breaking down that scheme because maybe it doesn't get drafted there oh it makes but, a huge difference but uh, but no matter what fields will be used and they will maximize his abilities and with you know like with kyler just a couple years ago as long as someone's out there in lamar like as long as they're willing to rush right away it's going to be a Big deal for fantasy. Yeah, I mean, really, all you need to know about Justin Fields at this point um, is that he was very similar to Trevor Lawrence, a superstar recruit out of high school. He was supposed to, uh, you know, be one of the next great ones. He's a very, very hard worker. He's an incredible athlete. So dual threat. I think you can make every NFL throw. And mm -hmm. when you've got that athleticism, you've got the track record of success that he has. Um, and you know, you combine, combined what he does on the field with fantasy football, how that works. Uh, I love the future outlook for Justin Fields and I think he's a winner. So, um, I'm much, much more confident in him than in the entire rest of the quarterbacks. Like I, Zach Wilson, um, you know, Trey Lance, Mac Jones, I, I am much more confident 
that Justin Fields will succeed as an NFL starter. And we don't have to worry about Fields being soft. Like if if you saw what happened in uh uh in the playoffs where I mean like he took that shot in uh in the ribs and then managed to go down and and throw a touchdown it's not going to you know I don't know if he should have been in the game or not but like when it comes to toughness you don't got to worry about that with Justin Fields that that dude is a beast. Yeah, and I would compare his his running prowess more to a Russell Wilson. Yes. Like Cam, Cam is uh at times runner first, you know, uh, I think Justin Fields is much more like Russ where he is going to go through his progressions. You know, people have criticized him as a one read quarterback. And then when you break the numbers down, you know, he actually had uh, great accuracy at a second and third read level. So I think some of the things that people have picked him apart for, you know, going to the same school as Dwayne Haskins does not yeah, get mean it that you're here. not a great quarterback on film fields. Uh, like I said, great floor in my opinion, you know, San Francisco might end up better for him than another destination, but that's just um, where we're at, I think, is hopeful that he, he finds a good home. Uh, interesting. So Trey Lance. We're going to talk about Trey Lance next? Yes, yeah, because this is in, we're talking about fantasy rankings, and both Jason and I have uh, eat, we have great doubts. Or mm -hmm. I have great doubts that Trey Lance will be able to translate into an NFL quarterback, but – for fantasy purposes, I'm going to take the shot on him before I I go to Zach Wilson. Oh, I I the first big disagreement on the show, Jason. Yeah, I, so I have right now as far as fantasy football rankings, I have Trey Lance ahead of Zach Wilson. That will I expect probably change after the NFL draft because I I think Zach Wilson will uh, be starting game one, and I think there's a good chance that wherever Trey Lance goes. Um, he's behind some, you know, if the Falcons were to draft him there, then Matt Ryan's a starter. Trey Lance is the future, in which case those would easily flip flop. But I think what Mike and I are saying here is, you know, this is a guy like you just brought up fields is more of a Russell Wilson type of runner. He he's not a guy that had a thousand yards rushing yet, you know, 480 yards rushing. This is a Josh Allen, yeah. Cam Newton, Trey Lance is a thousand yard rusher he rushed for 1100 yards in his uh really his only starting season right which was 2019 COVID took away the 2020 program they only had one game uh which wasn't that great for him no. this year but um so for fantasy purposes if they were both starters in the NFL year one I would put Trey Lance ahead yeah yeah that's a big if I mean I, I don't know if Trey Lance is going to be able to make it in the next level he was the player I was least impressed of the top top prospects uh with on film I don't think I he's going to be able that. to do it with his arm. I didn't see him make – you know, it was run first, run first, run first, first read, run first. Um, I have great concern. And the one-year sample size, I have, I have pretty significant yep. concerns with Trey Lance. And so that's a big if to me. Like, Zach Wilson is definitively higher for me, but Lance is somebody that, you know uh, – He's going to be the biggest risk for an NFL team. Yeah, you have a lot of comparisons to Josh Allen here. He played at you know a slightly smaller school like Josh Allen did, so weaker competition, beat up on those guys, was very, very successful, dominated in the rushing game, has a massive cannon of an arm. So there's a ton of similarities there. And honestly, that, I think that, that, that was that Mitch give, Trubisky too. Right, and I, I think that should give confidence to, you know, to the Foot Clan to what Andy's saying. Andy, you are on. Josh Allen you believed that Josh Allen would have a successful future while a lot of people didn't and here you are looking at Trey Lance you don't like the film I I certainly didn't like it as much as Josh Allen while people talk about his cannon arm it is not Josh Allen-esque I don't believe his arm can rival Josh Allen's and um, as a runner he seems not quite as strong and tough as when I, I, I literally, after I was done watching Trey Lance film, I went back and watched Josh Allen college film because I, I just, you know, it's been a long time since I've watched that. Sure. And you, people that got a hold of Trey Lance, if, if they got a hold of him in the backfield, they swing him to the ground. People got a hold of Josh Allen left, right, and center. And he's like, be off, you little people. <laughs> and you just, you, you could never get him down in that weak competition. So I don't think my notes on Trey Lance. He's a phenomenal rusher, but I'm not sure if his rushing will translate as well when he's playing NFL caliber. So I agree he is not quite um, a, a guaranteed prospect. Well, he's, he's a tough decision for fantasy players because I do think he's the kind of player that would benefit from sitting behind 
an experienced quarterback for a couple of years. I don't know. Is that is that an option for Atlanta, right, where, where Matt Ryan starts and then you can develop Trey Lance? He's extremely young. Um, I, I he's believe not even 21 yet. I believe that is the best landing spot for him, right. for the, the man Trey Lance. If I could pick my destination, that's where I, I would pick. And it's worth noting, Foot Clan, this is supposed to be, you know, every year th th things are – touted differently and we're talking about the quarterbacks that are at, at hand but this is supposed to be one of the best quarterback draft classes in years these five or maybe even six prospects are all highly touted first round grades all right we will this show is meant to be uh more uh, more of an overview than a than a deep dive on these players because mm -hmm. we want to make you aware of who's coming out who to pay attention to in the draft and who to do your research on depending on where you're at in your rookie drafts um so i don't i don't want to linger too long on certain players so we're not meaning to exhaust everything you could say about these players uh that exists but zach wilson let's talk about him uh he should go number two to the jets i think we all would be shocked if that didn't take place uh very very imp impressive arm uh, it's, make, yeah he has a big arm makes in quick delivery makes throws from ridiculous angles with ridiculous speed he makes the Mahomes Rogers type of whip uh, throws on the regular, um, with a level of frivolity that those players are able to play with when you can make those throws. Um, I do think that this is a pretty scary proposition for a team. You need to believe that Zach Wilson has his head on straight and wants to be great at the next level. Um, where are you guys with Wilson's upside? I know. I, I guess I get the impression that that Mike, you're a little lower on him than the consensus. The, uh, Jay Cutler was the comp that kind of came out to me on film from an arm because Jay Cutler's arm was great. Sure, was dude. unbelievable. Jay I Cutler mean, had his his time in the in the sun for fantasy purposes. Right. Like Wilson, one like one thing when you're when I'm watching him that stands out is he had the the. The, the benefit of playing behind an incredible offensive line. Like I've, there was several plays where I'm watching Wilson stand back there forever, and it's like, dude, this that's not happening in the NFL. Every once in a while you'll get a team with a super dominant offensive line. I get that. The Jets. But if you're going to the Jets, that will not be happening. You're going to have to make decisions a lot faster. Uh, you, you will not have that. Uh, that gift of being able to sit there and wait for somebody to get open. Now, I, I'm not, I'm not trying to trash Wilson. He, I think he is an impressive uh, talent. He has uh, my note essentially to Jason before the show was like, I think he has all the he has all the traits. He has all the abilities that he can succeed. Now, can he turn that into actual fantasy football dominance? It's getting harder and harder for the for uh, players who don't really run quarterbacks who who don't run to actually be great for fantasy football like the the era of of well Brady's going to be around forever but the, well, Her Herbert would be the example and that in Herbert did do it that would be at, the kind of player I see Zach Wilson to be right and, and so it's not impossible just saying that it is getting harder and harder which is why in my rookie drafts I'm going to take the upside instead of Zach, like Zach Wilson. Sure. He could be, you know, a cool low end quarterback one, but making, if he hits here, I'll put it this way. If he hits and Trey Lance hits Trey Lance's fantasy ceiling is like, it's not even in the stratosphere for Wilson, much higher risk though. So it depends on your tolerance for that. Yeah. Um, Zach Wilson on film looks great. He, he's he's got the tools. He's got the arsenal. I am very skeptical of the competition he played. It was super, super weak, and it's a chicken or the egg thing, right? Because uh, you, you look at his game splits against good teams uh, when he played against teams with nine wins or more. Uh, he had a 7-9 to nine touchdown to interception ratio versus uh, in the other games he was unbelievable. But then only one of those came in 2020. So did he get better? Did, you know, th this is the question is, in 2020 – did he really take a step up and become an elite quarterback worthy of the number two spot, which obviously the Jets think so, and, and I think a, a lot of people do? Or was his competition really, really, really bad this year, which it was, and it was. that's why he was good? I, I don't know. But it scares me. It scares me when you have one year of weak competition that you could end up with a Trubisky. 
Yeah, I think uh, I think where Mike and I differed on opinion wise with Wilson is simply the long term ceiling for Zach Wilson. When he talks about Trey Lance hitting, that would be very very significant um, for fantasy purposes. But I think Wilson represents in arm talent the kind of player that can hit on a. I mean, maybe it's only a one in twenty chance of his career arcs, but I do think that the Rodgers Mahomes type of future is a possibility. It might be a low probability possibility, which is not the most fun thing to say, but it's still it's still a reality in my world. Um, and and he'll have some weapons. He'll have some opportunities. This is going to be a rebuilt uh, Jets team. Mac Jones. Uh, excuse me. Who are you talking about? Michael McCorkle. Jones? Mike, Michael McCorkle. Michael McCorkle. So just before the show, we decided to check in on why Mac Jones is called Mac Jones. Mike was very curious. He said, um, I, well, I said, uh, who, when you have your child and they say, what's, what's his name? You go, Mac. I'm going like, to name him Mac. Do people, I know there's people out there that go by Mac, but in, in my head, I started to think. Middle name Donald. Does that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's so stupid. <laughs> Yeah, uh, a good MacDonald joke. But is is Mac actually short for something? I didn't. I was not aware. Well, it's it's short for one of the most common middle names in the English yeah. language, McCorkle, which is McCorkle, Michael McCorkle. And so you now you know why he goes by Mac. Yeah, if you had McCorkle to survive, to survive, we were, <laughs> oh, come look, on, <laughs> Michael McCorkle. He doesn't get first team reps. No way, he gets Mac his, he Jones gets his lunch money taken. Gets first team reps. Um. Uh, but football wise, how do you feel about Mac Jones? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of rumors about Mac Jones at three as well. Uh, is it Justin Fields? Is it Trey Lance? Is it Mac Jones? We don't know. Uh, Kyle Shanahan seems to like Mac Jones. Uh, rumors coming out of San Francisco is that's the side that he's on. There's others in the organization that like Trey Lance, others that like Justin Fields. Uh, I will be honest with you. I didn't want to like Mac Jones, period. Didn't want to like an Alabama quarterback. Is it because of the name? I didn't want to like a McCorkle. <laughs> Mm -hmm. No, I didn't know it was a McCorkle. Um, I, you know, there's some some characteristics on the surface. Reading a book by its cover, I didn't want to. I didn't want to like Mac Jones, but not, I do. Not the you like Mac Jones, but I I like him more than I thought I would on film. I think he's a pretty capable NFL ready quarterback. I think he's a player that you know. This is the difficult thing about what Jason said. When you have five or six quarterbacks coming out that all have first round grades, you know. Some years, Blaine Gabbert's the best thing on the table. Mm -hmm. Right. And in, in in a certain year, Mac Jones is the number one pick in this draft. Wasn't that the Christian Ponder year, too? Yeah, I mean, we, there was a Christian Ponder year. That's all you need well, to know. Saying, like, <laughs> there, right? are, there are years where you're like, oh, we need a quarterback. Mac Jones in a different landscape. No Trevor Lawrence. You know, he could be the first guy off the board. Sure. There is, I think some of his draft stock is impacted by the Alabama aspect, right? You have... You play at Alabama, you're playing with the best players around you on both sides of the ball every single game. But what I like about Mac Jones on film is is this is a player that, look, you look at what does elusive quarterback play mean? Well, it doesn't just mean running away from everybody. It doesn't just mean being too big and strong to throw people off of you. Sometimes it means uh, being a pocket presence player. And Mac Jones is, and he's got very, very quick feet in the pocket. He moves around and puts himself, uh, you know, a yard this way, a yard that way to avoid pressure, make the downfield throws. Um, in my opinion, I was pretty impressed with Mac Jones. So I do think he has right, right home. He has a, he has a, a chance. Yeah, I mean, one of the tough parts about evaluating Mac Jones is that if if he is truly great, if he is, you know, a next best thing, that's really above the shoulders. It's not something that I can see on film because I don't really know what was called in the huddle. I don't know how much was him, how much was him changing something at the line, how much was the the you know, I can I can try to say, okay, it looks like this is a second read, but you don't know. Did he did he go to this you know, when you're scouting, if we're just being honest, did he say I'm gonna go to that guy on that side of the field, so this is why I'm looking to the right before the snap? You don't know. Everybody says he's really smart, and and sure you're supposed to win at Alabama, but he did. Right, six hundred more yards than any other quarterback to open receivers. And if you compare him to Tua, who also had this system, I feel like he's way better than Tua. Tua even had better receiving options. He had Devonta Smith, but you know you 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 have Jerry Judy gone. Um, 
I don't know if you played with Ridley, uh, but he, you know, Waddle missed most of the year, right? And and Mac had uh, had a better season, so I do like Mac Jones, but it's hard to evaluate um, his his dynasty value changes tremendously if he doesn't go to number three. Yeah, if he goes number three to San Francisco, it's very significant. You think it's sig like a significant hit, even if he stays in the top ten? Yeah, because I don't think it's a guarantee he's he's starting. And I just mean like from you go to San Francisco with Kyle Shanahan, that that's going to be a huge difference than even going to some place like Denver, mm -hmm. and not necessarily starting day one and not being in the Shanahan system and not having the draft capital that high. I mean, look, it can go south quick for a top ten pick. Josh Rosen's a good example of that. Christian Ponder, Blaine Gabbert, yeah. Um, so I think it just means a lot from a tier aspect for him to go three. Do you think, think he goes three? No, I do not. You do not. I do. I do think he goes three. I think it's. You think I it's. Think, a, you think, think it's a smoke screen. I think it's, it's pure smoke screen. April liar. liar. Yes. <laughs> I think that I have my odds at Mac Jones, Trey Lance, then Justin Fields. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. I, I think he's my number three right now for who I think San Francisco will pick, but. I've been wrong before. Kyle Trask, uh, last quarterback. I'm sure this is like a, a so if, if Jason shout-out. If Trey Lance does go to number three, goes at three to San Francisco, then how are you feeling about Lance versus Zach Wilson? Stale question. Okay. Only because of the Jimmy Garoppolo. If Jimmy Garoppolo is out of town, put me on the reluctant Lance train. Okay. <laughs> Kyle Trask. Yeah, I don't think we need to talk about Kyle Trask much at all. <laughs> He, no, I mean I like him. I do. I I I like his film. And when I watch, I say he looks as good as Mac Jones to me. Uh, he doesn't quite have the same zip, but Peyton Manning didn't throw zip on the ball. He, he laid it over people's shoulders perfectly in stride. That's what I see from Kyle Trask. Peyton but Manning it, had zip on the ball, bro. But it seems to Be, me he had a lot of zip before. It, now, he couldn't throw the zip like you said because no one could throw zip. But well, I'm, my point is he. I, I don't feel like he was a you know he was throwing Pat Mahomes heaters here. Um, he would just put the ball exactly where it needed to be in stride. And that's what I saw from Kyle Trask, which I really, really liked. But it, it looks like he's, you know, not going to be a first-round pick. And if he falls to the, uh, to you know, second, third round, then he's irrelevant for fantasy. I, I like the prospect. Um, we'll revisit him if draft draft capital changes. He he needed to come out in the Blaine Gabbert year. That's, that's what he needed. All right. We're on to running backs. Nobody wants to talk about running backs, do they? Oh, man. Just one. Yeah, Mike, you are. Um, oh my no, goodness. I I refuse to allow Mike <laughs> to be the Najee Harris guy. Why well, don't we think are? E everybody's a Najee Harris guy. Is not a. There's not just some that like Najee Harris. He's the number one. Yes. Running back on most people's boards. Yeah, you know, between him and Travis Etienne, people are go back and forth. All right, give I, me, let's let's give the quick Najee Harris overview so, and and maybe some favorite potential destinations for Najee Harris to make the. Hair on the back of your neck stand up. So uh, why it's like why I'm considered a Najee Harris guy is because he's my number one, and it's not there is no A there is it's not A and B it is Najee, then space 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 Travis Etienne, uh, and tra and maybe like I, I like every once in a while I'm like yeah I think I like Javante more than than Etienne right now. Uh, so I'm, I am completely on board with Harris. He is going to just dominate for, for fantasy purposes. He has, uh, close, not, he's not as big, but close to Derrick Henry type of size. He's a 6'2", 230 pounds. He, a, a, except he is agile. He can go out and run routes where Derrick Henry can take a swing pass to the house because he's a locomotive. And once he's going, you can't stop him. Najee has actual like quick twitch acceleration uh that that derrick henry does not He'll turn have. and high point a ball in the air on a route exactly i i think that he is he can walk in and instantly be an unquestioned three down running back where etn maybe javante maybe to me harris will walk right into a three down role and will be incredibly valid he will turn into one of those uh, guys, who is a, a you're debating? Should I spend a top three pick on Najee? Now, I I only feel like we can say that about rookie running backs when they go in the top ten. He's not going in the top ten. He might not go in. He may go back of the first round. You guys were very excited about Jonathan Taylor last year, but the draft capital forced the hand of fantasy players and changed the viewpoint. It moved Clyde 
to number one. Sure. And it put him on a trajectory where, look, there are only so many destinations in football where you can walk into a three-down roll, and then you compound that with the draft capital, where I've seen Najee go second mm -hmm. round. Yep, yep, and so, that is very possible. So, uh, to me, that, that that's what separates him from uh, you know Christian McCaffrey coming out, or even Leonard Fournette in the first round, or Ezekiel Elliott. Um, yeah, it is definitely a shame that he's not going to be a top ten guy. He'll be a low in round one uh, guy. We're hoping he goes in the middle, but and he I, could go behind Etienne. Absolutely, I I think most mock drafts I've seen Etienne is ahead, but I think where Mike and I stand together is that the lesson we learned from last year in the Jonathan Taylor and not flipping off of that when that talent, his talent is enough to me where landing spot does not matter. He will be my number one running back. I don't care where he goes. Uh, you don't care where he'll I, go. I mean, I care for his future so, outlook. So Travis but Etienne compared... goes to to Buffalo. It, I'm sorry, Travis Etienne goes to Pittsburgh. Najee Harris goes to Buffalo. You have my attention. Yeah, I don't <laughs> yeah that want didn't that take to, me very long. I don't want that to happen. But the point here is, like, I while scouting Najee, you never, ever, ever see one guy tackle him. It takes a village. He's fast. He's got. I every have nothing trait. negative to say about Najee Harris. I'm just. It's my job to bring up these. Sure. Yeah. These points. The draft capital is one of them. He is older. He uh, yeah. For a, a year older than Etienne. Yeah, I'm just saying, 23 years old already because he was a four year guy. Uh, that so just means he's got his man body. Right. Yes. And he has a man body. The what's interesting is like if uh, I think that. Miami is probably the number one location to me just because I've seen this. Uh, I don't disagree with you. Uh, I've seen this coaching staff. Atlanta might not be too bad, though. Atlanta, no, Atlanta would be great. But I'm saying Miami is – I've seen the coaching staff. They will give their guy everything. And Najee Harris would uh, – Miles Gaskin's value would just be completely evaporated. So uh, I apologize if you're a, a Gaskin truther and that happens. What's an interesting one is Pittsburgh. Uh, and let's say you get you send Najee to Pittsburgh, and you send ETN to Miami, then you can at least have the debate because of uh, the situation that Miami is in. Like they're ready to go, and Pittsburgh needs to rebuild their offensive line. Where Najee's still probably my number one guy in that very specific instance. Uh, but I think that the point is that I'm trying to make, and I think Jason's trying to make, is it would take a a shocking turn of events in the draft to flip someone over Harris for us. Um, I think one of the things that's interesting about the running back class, there's a lot of talent at the very top, but there aren't destinations that are making even, you know, you have to find one, right? Like Miami. Okay. I'm, I'm pretty happy with Miami. We would have been pretty happy if Aaron Jones went there, but rookies second round Miami has some talent there at running back. I wish there were two or three destinations where I felt like he gets drafted there tomorrow and he's being drafted number one in a rookie draft. And I just don't think that that's necessarily going to happen. Well, I think the, you think he goes to the Jets? You're, you're looking at him that way? Yeah. yeah. I would be. I, 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 the, the Jets, for its, its opportunity. The Jets, the Steelers, the Dolphins. Uh, who you know? There's, there's a, a few destinations. Arizona. I think are, yeah. All right, Travis Etienne, we'll talk about him briefly. Uh, big play guy, big burst player, great pass catcher, which yes. can make a, a tremendous impact in fantasy. Uh, if he ends up in a in a three-down role where you're not doubting that part of the Travis Etienne equation, um, I have no problem personally drafting him ahead of Najee Harris. Uh, I am letting fate decide between those two in my rookie drafts. I'm letting that destination make the decision for me um, because I think ETN isn't an elite category. You guys have, or at least Mike has huge space between yeah, uh, the two of them, but both four year starters, both four, four year starters at, at perennial national championship programs. The knock on ETN was the, the senior season. Didn't usurp the previous two, you know, eight, a carry monster seasons, but he did catch the ball a ton. You that, know? Yeah. That, that changed. He really worked on being a pass catcher. Uh, he was talked to about it. He, when when ETN got into college, he was nervous. He was scared to catch the ball. Hey, that's not a part of his game that he wanted to be involved in. But he knew that to make it in the NFL, he had to work on it. Clearly, he did. Uh, the the biggest separator. I mean, uh, aside from size, but the the separator. Funny is the the 
the knock you can give to Harris is he does lack long speed. You know, the, the home run, uh, a, Derek Henry or, or Adrian Peterson type of speed. Harris doesn't have that, and I I don't care. Uh, but ETN absolutely has that. He has uh, – and he, he has the extra gear and kind of has that – the the NOS – sitting uh, on his on in the backpack that he can just click on at whenever he feels like it that Harris Harris doesn't have that extra gear. The, there there is some concerns, you know, when you look at Najee Harris, you know he's going to be able to sustain uh in between the tackle work all the time. Mm-hmm. Uh ETN is a player that, you know, when you saw him have success, the collegiate bounced it to the outside, used the speed to get there. That can be something that breaks down when you're 5'10, 205 at the next level. If you don't get to you know, you're facing athletes of a different caliber, although Clemson faced a lot of pretty good athletes. Uh, that would be the one yeah, it's not impossible, kind of worry. But. And him potentially just not being a three-down back in the NFL. He could be drafted to a team that, that decides to use him as a compliment. Yeah, at 205 pounds, he might not be the goal line back. I think that would be a mistake because Alvin Kamara is great around the goal line. Right. And that's kind of a – I've got him as like a poor man's Alvin Kamara comp, um, but he is, he is very good. There's three good backs this year. So let's talk about the third one. Yeah, Javante Williams, North Carolina, shared the backfield, um, broke the pro football uh, focus record for broken tackles per attempt. Yeah, he is very elusive. Uh, 75 broken tackles, led the country, um, elite contact balance. um, Three seasons, but his his final season was the most impressive, 19 touchdowns on the ground. Um, And on top of that, he is sharing – he had to share the field with Michael Carter – Yet who, still had a college dominator score the same as Najee. It, who, uh, like, we're a little bit lower on Michael Carter here, I think, compared to the consensus out there. But Carter's going to be – I like Carter. Yeah. But he's – Carter will be drafted. Like, Carter is uh, going to be on an NFL team. So to have to split time with another another NFL pro and still have the success that Williams had, that says a lot. When I was watching Williams, uh, my comp – you talked about the contact balance, Andy – I felt like I was watching the Kareem Hunt tape out of uh, Toledo, sure. where it you it takes a lot to make him lose his balance to knock him off his center of gravity. Like yeah. people just bounce off of him. It's a triangle, and he and he made yes, yeah, he's he's just he's connect, he's planted, he's rooted into the ground. Uh, his his uh, passing production profile wasn't as great as Kareem Hunt, but. Man, I that's that's who my comp was, and that's not something I. Well, one, I you don't hand out a cream hunt comp lightly. You certainly but, don't. But two, that's not my bag is not recognizing a a, a NFL pro while I'm watching a college player. So that the fact that that actually jumped out to me was was a pretty big deal for my scouting of like this player is going to be great. Yeah, I I, th- I think he's going to be very very good, but I don't think great. Yeah, you know, he's going to be great. He is, Jason, he's vi- he's got he's shifty, he's powerful, but he's he's good at everything. Elite to me at at not necessarily any one thing at one trait, but I I really like him. I've got him as a Melvin Gordon, David Montgomery comp. He will be he's, drafted to be a three down back though. That's not what I love. As fast as Melvin, that's that's what I love about uh, his his size and his profile is that whatever team's going to take a shot on him, they're probably doing that because they want to have a three down back. Where's he, he going? What round? Second round? I think late second. S- yeah, third, late, I think late second. Third will be the lowest he will go. Okay, and in, in third round and up. We're good. I could very, very easily see, and I'm not saying I want this, but I could very easily see, and I've heard rumblings of it, of the Cardinals taking him, which would be a very good landing spot for him. It would. I think it's possible Trey Sermon goes ahead of him in the draft. Okay. Possible. Um, who we'll talk about momentarily. Yeah, Javante, very impressive on film. Um, you know, managed to dominate despite sharing the backfield, as you said. Uh, didn't catch a ton of passes, but 25 this past year. But, he, but pretty even, good. Even the twenty-five, you know, he's still he still hit the threshold for uh, our our production profile when you're comparing him to what pro good pros did back for their college team. So he's even though those numbers feel low, it looking at it percentile wise, he's he's still okay. And he ran a four or five five. Yeah, which is it, uh, Kareem Hunt was like a four six two or something yeah. like that. We don't so, have a, an official number from Najee, like, right? 
Correct. He didn't run. Yeah. I okay. choose not to run. I <laughs> choose Trey Sermon. Let's talk about Trey Sermon. He is difficult to gauge. Is it because he's always hurt? Well, it's because he spent three years and then he had to transfer to go to Ohio. And I mean, he played on the on a big time stage. Looked pretty solid. Uh, I kind of like him in the tape from I do too. It, he he is tough because he. What I'm watching him, it checks the boxes or he checks the boxes, but in the most like not exciting way. He's tall. Very and, tall. And so you I'm like he's good, but I'm just I don't know. There that that the juice, the spark, it just it doesn't happen very much when I'm when I'm watching it. He had a couple of games and then and this is part of the downside, right? He had a all of his production came in like these three games that were unbelievable. If you watch film on those games, you go, this guy is a world beater. He wants it more than anyone else on the on the field. Um, and, you know, he just – he he got going. But then he had some bad games mixed in there. He's dealt with injury problems. I like Trey Sermon. I wonder if we haven't seen the best from him yet. Yeah, it's, it's entirely possible. Uh, the fact that he had to transfer out and then dealt with injuries. There are enough uh, good games on film where I go, this guy could be something special. Um, but you know, we, we say this a lot this time of year. It really depends on the capital that's going to go in specifically for running backs more than every other position. Draft capital has a very large correlation to fantasy success. All right. Uh, regrettably, I have to talk about another Memphis running back on the show <laughs> yeah. in Mike's presence. Sophomore Kenneth Gainwell, um, Five eleven, one ninety five. Yeah, little nice. guy, small. I am uh, on record as appreciating the multifaceted abilities of Kenneth Gainwell. His stop and go and shiftiness and uh, pass catching ability, and I think he's going to make an NFL team significantly better. Um, but I do not know that he will do it on a consistent and enough basis from a workload standpoint to make me excited in fantasy. He opted out of 2020, so you really have one season in 2019 where he came on, dominated, and then said, yeah, I don't think I can do anything better in 2020, so it, it, it's hard to know, and more than any player in this draft, this is, uh, there, there's two, there's there's uh, Kenneth Gainwell and Rondell Moore, those are the two that, to me, Rondell Moore, a wide receiver, um, their draft capital makes all the difference to them because I think they're electric and outstanding. They, well, I watch them. They're fantastic. But I worry that they will not be given by an NFL team the opportunity to show that they can really, you know, uh, that their bodies can withstand a high NFL workload. And, no, he, and that might he be did smart. Weigh, he weighed in at 202 at his pro day. Uh, which is still... He didn't gain well. Mm. Oh, like, enough. Mm, mm. Just say like how what did ETN weigh in at? Like wasn't he like a two hundred five guy? I believe uh, he's a two hundred five two ten. Just saying that the the size difference between those two guys is not tremendous. It looks Gainwell's, on the field. An, in, Gainwell's an inch taller, but ten pounds lighter. And uh, and so the the tape, Jason, where you're talking about he a couple years ago when he had his true breakout season in college, the reason that Antonio Gibson did not have more production is because he had to play behind Kenneth Gainwell. That's how good this guy was uh, for Memphis. Well, we've seen we've seen the good and the bad from Memphis, so to speak. I mean, you, a lot of promise. We both love Daryl Henderson coming out. Yeah, hasn't really, you know, he seemed to hit a ceiling. Didn't didn't see you know injuries a little bit, but you know, I think we all agree he Cam Akers is run away with that job. And then you saw Antonio Gibson with very limited work at Memphis come out and make a big impact and give you a lot of promise for the future. So Gainwell sits to. You know, to me, he's going to have to make an Eckler-like impact on yes. a team. And he can't. He's, he he's is the best, an elite. He's the best pass catcher yes. in this class by far. At the running he, back he, position. At the yeah. running back position. He's, uh, I mean. Ran a 4-4-2 on pro day. That's, that's almost, fine. Almost, I feel like half of his snaps he was lined up at wide receiver. Every time I'd watch, he's in the slot. He's lining up outside. He is, you know, I, I worry that he's going to turn into Theo Riddick. Which is, hey, Theo Rick had some really good, you know, fantasy value, but it's obviously not the dominant uh, fantasy asset you're hoping for. All right, we've gone through the top five quarterbacks and the top five running backs. Give me one more running back name. I know uh, Chuba Hubbard could end up going ahead of Gainwell. He could, yeah. Um, 
that would be another one to bring up. Is there another name that, that you want to? I'll give one uh, name here. Um, Don't take my name. Well, is is he a large, hefty fella? <laughs> no. Is it McCorkle? No, it's oh. uh, Ramondre Stevenson. Some say Ramondre Stevenson because he's, he's a big boy. He's a, he's a large fella. And I I really um, I'm I'm fascinated with him because my my notes on Ramondre Stevenson are terrible. Like I'm like he looks slow. He looks fat. He looks awful. Like, I, I did not like scouting his tape at all. But then as the season went along, he was suspended the year prior. Right. Missed the first part of the games because of, uh, I, I don't remember if it was PED. I don't think it was PED. I think it was uh, uh, maybe not marijuana. Dis but, disciplinary thing? Um, but he was suspended. And it looked like he came in soups fat. Like, you... That I felt so bad for the jersey, and I feel like at my <laughs> oh, size, oh. I'm allowed to to say this because oh. my shirts scream, um, and and the jersey did. But at the <laughs> towards the end of Little the season, Lindale White, yes, exactly. Towards the end of the season, and in the you know into the college bowl season, I feel like he looked different, and he's got he got he a looked, bigger jersey. <laughs> yeah, but he either got a bigger jersey or he just got shirt in better size shape. matters. And so I am fascinated with him because mm -hmm. I think he's. I think if he's in shape, he's talented. It's kind of like Eddie Lacy. You had two Eddie Lacy's. You had a really, really talented guy who could catch the ball, who could run people over, and then you had a fat Eddie Lacy that was like, uh, you, you're you slow and can't do anything. And so that's kind of what Ramondre Stevenson is. I don't know his current shape, but if it's oval or you're, triangle, you're, but... You're pretty fascinated with him? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Wow. I actually like that one. Yes, I am. I am pretty fascinated with him. Uh, Mike, did you have any other uh, names you want to bring up? Uh, Khalil Herbert. He played for Virginia Tech. Okay. Uh, and he's another situation where he – Little herbs? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, little instead of big herbs. Yeah. Uh, where he was at Kansas, and I think it was uh, – playing behind Puka Williams, who is another hopeful draft prospect at the running back position. And he transferred out, and he went to Virginia Tech. Uh, but – I I saw a guy who who has it. His production sure. profile is subpar, and it, that stuff is important to me. That when I've been tracking rookies and they're making the jump, the production profile absolutely matters. So his is a little bit scary, uh, but but he he is a well rounded player that could find himself into a he he could be a three down guy if like. The universe works in mysterious ways for him. Either of you fans of Chuba Hubbard? Uh, he's interesting because he is so fast, and which which is forty was actually not fast, but game. Go watch him play, and he is he feels is like fast. a depth NFL. He is fast, runner to and, me. and he, when his you know a couple years ago, and so in two thousand nineteen for Oklahoma State, his production profile is off the charts his breakaway speed is better than anyone i mean it's like cj spiller where if you can get him out in space you will you will not catch him um but i didn't see much outside of the straight line speed um and he, obviously 2020 was very disappointing a down year for him so I, I always have a hard time when someone gets worse all right well i think you can take off your dynasty pants now until <laughs> next episode uh, we want to thank Pristine Auction for supporting the podcast. There's a Joe Burrow official signed game ball with custom display. Limited edition up there right now. $50 auction price. Those end on Wednesday night. There's some Matt Ryan swag up there. CeeDee Lamb signed game ball. 20 bucks right now. Hundreds of daily auctions. Um, and, uh, look, they're just doing more and more and more at Pristine Auction. Um, they have facilities out here in Phoenix. We've been able to see them. They're building another one right now. So one of the things that makes it really nice is how much they have. You know, you want to go find your guy, your player, who you're a fan of. Uh, these guys just got me a Justin Jefferson helmet that I love, uh, and I've been wearing it to all of my tackle football <laughs> games lately. Oh, so, yeah. No, do not wear their, their helmets. They're for display only. All right, pristineauction.com. Use the code BALLERS. That'll do it for today's episode of the podcast. Thank you so much for listening and supporting the show. Bring those dynasty pants to Thursday. Indeed. That's all I'm asking. We'll see you then. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.